welcome back to our beautiful hometown of Bathurst. Glenn is heading south of the province again today. He's going to take his family on a little trip. Yes, I've been lucky enough to be invited to do some whale watching around the St. Andrews area. The St. Andrews area and all that fundy area has got the highest tides in the world, as you know. And we're also going to do some uh, kayaking around the rock formations near the Fundy Trail. And we're going to visit an island that's only really an island like half of the day because of the fluctuations of the tide. So it's a really cool area. you got to check this out. Stay tuned. New Brunswick is more than 28,000 square miles in size. And the best way to see the wonders of our province is by driving the five scenic routes. Each one is color coordinated and marked with a distinct sign. To get to St. Andrews, follow the Funday Coastal Drive, which stretches along the New Brunswick coastline from its border with Maine to its border with Nova Scotia. Situated at the end of a peninsula overlooking the beautiful Bay of Fundy is the coastal community of St. Andrews by the Sea. The scenery is breathtaking, the air is clear, and the people in the community are friendly. St. Andrews is located on the east coast of Canada and is only 30 kilometers from the New Brunswick border with the state of Maine. It not only shares a geographical connection with our neighbors to the south, but also a historical one as well. St. Andrews was settled by United Empire Loyalists in 1783, following the American Revolution. Some of the settlers had dismantled their homes in Cast Iron, Maine, and brought them to St. Andrews aboard barges, where they were reassembled and can still be seen today. In fact, the Maine town area has been designated a National Historic District, and some of these buildings are more than 200 years old. The highest tides in the world are found along the Bay of Funday, and at St. Andrews, the tides can reach as high as 30 feet. This magnificent bay stretches between the provinces of Nova Scotia, New Brunswick, and the American state of Maine. It's 180 miles long. The mouth of the bay is 62 miles wide, and its depth ranges between 400 and 700 feet. In those murky depths are some of the world's largest whales. These gigantic mammals like to surface in the waters not far from St. Andrews, which is where our adventure begins. While in St. Andrews, one of the most popular things to do is whale watching. You're not going to want to forget your camera, and there's no better place in the world to do so than right here with your family in St. Andrews. Whales, that way. We're heading past the Fundy Isles to nearby Campobello Island. I'm really fortunate enough to have my family with me on this adventure. I saw one on Daniel Cook. A oh, Daniel Cook, yeah. Oh, he went whale watching? The trip into the whale watching hotspot takes about 10 minutes, and once you get far enough out, you won't be disappointed. And as my cameraman Mike can attest to, these whales come really close to the boat. Keep in mind, we are just seeing a glimpse of the massive frame of the finback whale. These are the world's second largest whales and can grow up to 70 feet in length. A fin whale can eat two to three tons of fish per day, and it is the fastest whale traveling at speeds of up to 35 miles per hour. You can see as many as seven different species of whales in the bay. During your whale watching excursion in St. Andrews, be prepared to see so much more than just whales. The Fundy coastline is famous for its aquaculture sites, its many lighthouses, and of course, tons of wildlife. Whale watching in St. Andrews 
is definitely a worthwhile experience. What would a trip to St. Andrews be without spending a night at one of the most famous hotels in Canada? The Fairmount Algonquin, built in the 1880s, is an impressive four-story, half-timbered, castle-like structure which is the resting spot for Glenn and his family during their stay in St. Andrews by the Sea. The Fairmount Algonquin and St. Andrews by the Sea have been in the hospitality industry for over 100 years. This is one of the original uh, resort destinations um, in Canada. Uh, that was formed back when uh, CP Rail started to develop a chain of hotels across the country. Altogether, the resort has 234 guest rooms, three very distinct dining rooms, grand public spaces which look and feel like you're living in a Victorian mansion, a pool, a spa, acres upon acres of grounds for you to relax and unwind under the sun, and its very own golf course. Coming up, I play a few holes at one of Canada's oldest golf clubs, tour the impressive Minister's Island, Daddy's gonna have a little rest, okay. Daddy gonna have and take in some Z's at St. Andrews by the Sea. Another beautiful day in my hometown of Bathurst and as I hike the trails on this fine afternoon, Glenn is playing a disgraceful round of golf at the Fairmount Algonquin Golf Club. I bet you they're just about ready to kick him off the course. Check this out. The Fairmount Algonquin Golf Course was originally opened in 1896. Recently, construction was completed to upgrade the Algonquin Golf Course into a signature world-class facility. So we have two of the top 20 holes in Canada on our golf course. Number 12, which is in the top 10 holes in Canada, and number 13, which is in the top 20 holes in Canada. <laughs> uh, the great part about playing our golf course is as soon as you hit that back nine, you kind of forget about those, uh, those bad shots you hit because you're paying so much attention to the beautiful views that you have along the whole back nine. Eight of the nine holes, you're looking at the water, and it's just fantastic. So Jason, we're on number 13. This is one of the most picturesque holes in all of Canada. It's a beautiful hole. You can see the town of St. Andrews in the background. A lot of times when you're playing this hole, it's a short par five. You're not paying attention to your shots. You're looking out over the town of St. Andrews and it's just be beautiful. It's uh, actually rated one of the top 20 holes in Canada. Really? Yes. Well, you finished off number 12 quite nicely with the par. I think I got an eight or something, but I finished it off in style. So you've got the honors, my friend? We'll see what happens. Please. Oh my, lovely. Okay. Can I borrow your tea? You certainly is, can. Is this a lucky tea? <laughs> it is a lucky tea. Okay. I'm gonna have to take my glasses off for this. Duck hook. I think that's gone. That's a good swing, you might get it. Do you have a saw or a hammer and uh, <laughs> I carried extra uh, chainsaw on the bed. One of those, well we'll borrow his lawn tractor down there too because we're gonna need it. And some scuba deer. Underneath the waters near St. Andrews lies a link from the mainland to Minister's Island. The dramatic tides of the Bay of Funday reveal this sandbar bridge, which makes the island accessible by car. For many years, this was the only way to visit the island. However, at high tide, visitors can now make use of a boat service to explore the island, as tour guides shuttle you around for the grand tour. Minister's Island is named after a loyalist Anglican priest, Reverend Samuel Andrews, who settled the island in 1786. It's most famous for being the summer home of Canadian Pacific Railway builder, Sir William Van Horn. 
This was Van Horn's summer cottage, built in 1892. William Van Horn was the engineer behind building the railway across Canada from coast to coast. Why he chose this area, you really have to look around and see. And basically, that's what he did. He came down looking to build the railway down this end of the country, saw the area, and that was it. Covenhoven is a 50-room summer mansion named in the honor of Van Horn's father. The inside is decorated with precious artifacts. This room originally was uh, all wood, it's all pine, gas lighting. The walls at Covenhoven are adorned with priceless paintings, some of which are painted by Van Horn himself. Caressing the coast of the island is Van Horn's bathhouse. Built from local stone, the bathhouse was constructed to service bathers who refreshed themselves in a saltwater pool carved out of sandstone on the beach. A short walk along a path at Minister's Island will take you to William Van Horn's barn. It is yet another reminder of the man's desire for grand architecture. This is one of Canada's largest livestock barns. It was home to Van Horn's thoroughbred horses and prized herd of Dutch belted cattle. We are unique. There's nothing like our island. Ah! My ball's not over there. Still to come, Glenn's adventure in St. Andrews continues. We're locked in with the oldest tree in the world. Pretty cool. Low high five on that one. Welcome back to the New Brunswick Adventures. I'm Glenn Ferguson, your host, and we are visiting the Bay of Fundy, a town called St. Andrews by the Sea. I got a question for you. What has over 50,000 plants, trees, perennials, and shrubs, and a conifer so old that dinosaurs used to stomp on them? The answer? Kingsbury Garden, where Glenn and his family are right now. Let's check it out. We found our way to Kingsbury Gardens, located in the, in the heart of St. Andrews by the Sea. And in fact, there's so many sights and sounds and smells here, it's incredible. And there's even a playhouse here built in 1894 by a local shipbuilder and still maintained just like all the flowers and everything here. Let's go take a tour. Kingsbury Garden spreads across 27 acres of former grand old estates. The property was donated to the province of New Brunswick by the Flamer family and opened its doors in 1998. In that time, it has been named one of Canada's top 10 public gardens. It is made up of mostly perennials and there are about 2,500 different varieties and close to 50,000 plants on site. They also have several animals on site, including ducks, goats, and peacocks. The garden is bounded by ancient cedar hedges that are up to 100 years old. But the hedges are not the oldest plants on the premises. Not by a long shot. Maureen, what do we have here? This is one of the oldest trees known on the planet. It is. It was thought the ginkgo biloba used to be the oldest one, but now the Wallamai pine from Australia has it beat by quite a long time. The heritage goes back, they think, 200 million years, but the oldest known fossil was 2 million years okay. up until 1994, when a forest ranger in, uh, in Australia's Blue Mountains Wallamai National Park found these trees. He abseiled into a rainforest gorge and, and found something that he'd never seen before. So when they identified it as being the same as two million year old fossils, they were amazed because most plants evolve over the years and these ones have basically stayed the same. How did you get it? Well, it's an interesting story because we, uh, one of our board members used to be a Sotheby's staff person. It no longer is, but he keeps up the ties and he saw an international auction and thought, oh, an ancient tree, this is a perfect gift for Kingsbury Garden. And we have the first in Canada. You know, looking at this tree, it, he's not very beautiful, but 
our patron, Mrs. Lucinda Flamer, says, even if you have ugly children, you love them just the same. And we certainly do love Pericles. He's a, a fascinating plant to add to our collection. Funny, that's what my mother said to my father. <laughs> well, we got a plant almost or as old as a dinosaur. It's that's the first right. time I've ever seen this. That's this right. is pretty cool. And not many people get to see Pericles, which is the name, uh, with, with, a, with the cage open. Well, it sure has been a pleasure meeting you. <laughs> Later, and probably. you're probably going to live a lot longer than I am. <laughs> we hope so. Oh, excuse me? Now back to some more golfing at one of Canada's finest courses, St. Andrews by the Sea. And it's proving to be one of the toughest. I can't keep the ball on the fairway. Ah! My ball's not over there. This is not, one, not only one of the hardest golf holes in all of Canada, it's also one of the top 20. And I'm going to shoot probably a 10 on this one. Jason, did you find your balls? I, I'm laying perfect. We have to borrow a lawn tractor or something because I'm not finding, I'm not finding anything. Jason is the club professional here at St. Andrews. And for me to keep on par with him, I got to bring my own game to the show. Oh, I'm looking. Oh, look at that. I found my ball, Jason. It's right there. Jeez, it must it's be like high. I told you that was a lucky tee back there. Yeah, OK, funny. There's two balls here. OK, well, let, you go first. Show you the so, way? Yeah, so we're both shooting two, right? We're both shooting two, yes, that's right, yeah, that's right. Because yeah. you were lucky enough to find that yeah, ball. Yeah, I must have kicked off the tree. That's right, that's right. I got right. a good bounce. Okay, we'll see if I can get lucky with this second shot. Okay. Wow. Hmm. A little right, but it's going to work, I think. Oh, uh, see that a member's nice, bound. Nice see kick. That? This is a par five? This is a par five. Okay, I'm going to yes. try your club. Ooh, this could work. No, we're going swimming. Uh-oh. Final result, not good. Ooh. That's what you call a worm burner. Well, it's a nice day to go down by the water and you'll be down there. A couple more shots like that, they'll be at St. Andrews, ready to go for dinner. <laughs> Let's go. Open her up and swing hard. Oh! Uh -oh. Glenn's adventure in St. Andrews continues. <laughs> On the New Brunswick Adventures, Canada's East Coast experience. Welcome back, and we are visiting the beautiful town of St. Andrews by the Sea, which is situated on the Bay of Fundy, home of the highest tides in the world. The Fairmount Algonquin Golf Course boasts one of the top 10 holes in all of Canada, and for over 100 years, golfers have tested their skills on this premier course. Sadly, someone allowed Glenn Ferguson to shame the club's prestigious tradition and let him play a round of what he calls golf. Find my ball, Jason. I think I found you. Hope it's low tide. Oh, you're gonna have a great shot down there. Uh-oh. Is that a kick and a chip down there? Just a kick and a chip. Oh, Laying my. nicely on that seaweed. Uh, can I hit it from there? Am I allowed to? Oh, or? definitely, yes. So I definitely need a sand wedge. Best of luck to you. 52 degree angle. Okay, we're gonna need it. Okay, here we go. Any advice, word of a uh, caution here? Uh, just close your eyes and hope for the best with my okay. word of advice Full for swing, you. half swing. I would take, I'd take a little bit harder swing. You're sending oh. that seaweed off nice, maybe a little fluffy. Holy jeez, where did I crank that one to? This is par five, all right. Hey, Jason. Yeah. We're allowed to hit from down here? This is legal? Ah, uh, yeah, it's no problem. Okay. Huh. Interesting. I've never hit off a dulse before. <laughs> okay. Pin high on this one, eh? Okay, full swing, open up. Open her up and swing hard. Bring her on hard. 
Here we go. <laughs> Swing easy, follow through. St. Andrews in the background. Here we go. And the twelve. Whoops. Uh-oh. Albatross, what do you call it, eagle? It's an eagle, yes, great Three. shot, great shot. <laughs> Plus a kick in a chip. <laughs> it sure has been a pleasure. Nicely done, nicely done. Being on one of the greatest golf courses in Canada, this place is truly a fantastic area. I've just visited. If you want to come golfing to one of the best places in the world, St. Andrews, come see this band, and you'll have a great trip. Summertime, let's go do a couple more holes. Let's go. The Bay of Fundy is one of New Brunswick's most amazing experiences. And this area of the province is accessible from many directions. If you're traveling from the southeastern United States, you can easily pick up the Fundy Coastal Route as you enter the border crossing at St. Stephen. For those Canadians who live west of New Brunswick, and for those visitors from northwestern United States, your New Brunswick holiday begins with a drive along the River Valley Scenic Route which connects to the Bay of Fundy at the city of St. John. The province of New Brunswick on the east coast of Canada is an amazing place. Our culture, places to visit, adventures, and people make this area of Canada unique. Thanks so much for watching, and join us next time on the New Brunswick Adventures, Canada's East Coast Experience.